Okay, this, um, this webinar actually has three parts. Uh, the first part uh, I will introduce, uh, it is Carl Moons still, uh, on the, the ins and outs, more or less, of uh, the different steps in systematic reviews or prognosis studies. Then we continue actually the, the different tools we have developed, where we can find them and where we are. And then finally, we continue with uh, what is happening now within Cochrane and how to do a systematic review within Cochrane. And every uh, part is, will be ended with a Q&A. Now, first, uh, the first part is uh, now, I think we all know that Cochrane uh, has a huge reputation and also a long reputation on reviews and meta-analysis of interventions. And the last, what is it, 15 years, perhaps 20, maximum uh, we do systematic reviews of diagnostic test accuracy studies as well uh, on the other side uh, perhaps more outside Cochrane there is a clear interest and increase in the the role and focus on personalized and precision medicine actually it dictates the whole literature and also all grant calls are dictated by personalized and precision medicine and if you carefully look at that uh, that means all is actually asking for better prognosis information to get better treatment indications and therefore better indications on expected effects of treatment. So personalized and precision management and medicine is very much uh, asking for the proper prognosis information. Now that goes inside, uh, goes together, coincides with a growing number of primary prognosis studies in the literature. It's expanding and even outweighing system, uh, randomized trials and diagnostic test accuracy studies. And that means if the primary prognosis studies increase, we need to systematically review and aggregate them and, and do provide met and provide meta-analysis where possible. Now, Cochrane is now implementing reviews of prognosis studies in, since a very short period, and uh, we're coming back on that in the second part. Now, before we continue very quickly, what are the different types of prognosis studies that we find in the literature? And I'm talking about primary prognosis studies. The first type is, uh, this is all based uh, on the progress series, which was published in 2013 in two journals. And the first uh, type of primary prognosis study is so-called studies on average or overall prognosis. And those studies are rather looking at what the most likely course or health outcome in a particular time period will be of individuals within a particular health condition. Now, traditionally, if we think about uh, targeted populations in prognosis studies, we think about people with a disease or with a diagnosis, but I uh, hope we all appreciate that you don't need to be sick to have a prognosis. For example, pregnancy is not a disease, and still we are checking what the prognosis of the mother and the child, and the same applies to the general population to see what the potential outcomes are, for example, with developing cancer, diabetes, or cardiovascular events. So prognosis is not only about sick people. The second type of primary prognosis studies are so-called prognostic factor studies. And these studies usually show which factors are associated and preferably independently associated using some kind of multivariable analysis with a specific health outcome Individual, in individuals with a particular health condition, the same as in the first part, but then focusing on factors. The third type of primary prognosis studies is actually a consequence of perhaps number two, where they focus on prognostic model studies. And that's not so much focusing on factors, but rather on the combination of factors and how these factors can be combined to a single model and to see how well that model predicts a particular outcome in individuals with a particular health condition and those prognostic models need to be developed and subsequently being tested in other individuals to see how well they predict and that is uh, that testing is called validation and the final type of primary prognosis studies are studies on so-called treatment selection factors and that is rather it is originally dictated by genetic research so which genes predict a differential treatment effect, but increasingly it's also including other types of factors or even combination of factors, which are models, to see which are predictors of a differential treatment effect of a particular intervention individuals with a particular health condition. Now, having said that, 
we need to, and in all four types of primary prognosis studies, we see a huge increase of publications in the literature. And, uh, and that means we need to summarize all that evidence uh, and all that information to clear cut evidence. And that means we need to do systematic reviews. And then we, of course, fall back on the steps that we would know very well from other types of reviews on interventions and diagnostic test accuracy studies. And they are listed on this slide, which is how to formulate a review question, the PICO, the, how to search, how to select, how to extract the data, how to critically assess the studies, how to synthesize them on meta-analysis, and how to interpret and draw conclusions and recommendations. And at the bottom, you see a paper that provides a very nice overview in very lean, lean English uh, on how to do systematic review on prediction models, but that can also be applied for the other types of primary studies as a nice guide. Now, the very first step is a well-formulated review question. <clears throat> I think we all know the PICO, the Population Index Comparator and Outcome System from the other types of reviews. Now, actually, for prognosis, sorry, for reviews or prognosis studies, we did the same, but we extended two elements that are very typical and also important for prognosis studies. And the first one is the T, and the T refers to two time points. One is at what moment are we actually prognosticate? So at what moment are, for example, the prognostic factors or models to be used? And two, over what time period are we predicting the health outcomes in the targeted individuals? Also, that varies from minutes, sometimes hours, for example, post-operative complications, sometimes a month for in-hospital complications, and sometimes years or even lifetime is very uh, modern to study. And the th second thing that we added is the setting, which is also very important for prognostic factors and prognostic studies and prognostic models. Namely, what is the intended setting or role in which the, uh, the index elements of a prognosis review, a review are to be used and therefore are to be studied. So rather than the PICO, we use the PICOTS in step one. The second step is we need to search for studies, of course, as in all review. Now, the good news is also there quite a few uh, research has been conducted and search strategies have already been developed in 2001 by Ingui, further refined and updated by uh, Brian Haynes and published in the BMJ 25. And lastly, uh, these, both these uh, search strategies have been again validated and updated to generic search strategies for finding both prognostic model studies as well as prognostic factor studies. And it also provides guidance on how to tweak these search strategies for your own review question. Three is the step of the objective selection of studies. And actually, we can be short on that. Um, currently, we have not written explicit guidance yet for that. We are not sure yet whether that is also needed, because clearly that's not really different from other types of reviews, including Cochrane reviews. Although we have to acknowledge that there are more deviation from the review question possible as soon as you start selecting your studies for your review. But that is actually also addressed in the critical appraisal part, where we also ask questions about applicability, and that will be focused on the in the next step. Uh, the next step is um, how to objective early extract the data from the selected publications and uh, there there is some uh, guidance developed and that's called the so-called charms checklist uh, published in a few years ago and that helps you actually is to determine per domain there are 11 domains of different types of data that can be found in a primary study on uh, prognosis and to per domain, there are signaling elements that need to be extracted from a primary study to fill your review. And that step is very important also to do a proper critical appraisal and risk of bias assessment, which is indeed the next step. And that is um, the critical appraisal, or actually the formal risk of bias uh, assessment. Now, in this element, uh, and in this step, there are two tools yet developed. One 
is the CRIPS tool, already developed in 26 and further refined in 2013. And that's a true risk of bias tool to score and critically appraise primary prognostic factor studies. So that is for the type two studies, which I briefly introduced in the beginning. And the second risk of bias tool that exists and that is currently proficiently accepted and will be published in the fall of this year, hopefully even in the next two months. And that's a formal risk of bias tool, it's called ProBust, for critically, a critical appraisal of prediction model studies, both for model development and model validation. Currently, there are no formal tools for type 1 prognosis studies on overall prognosis and type 4, but we do suggest uh, that if you are conducting a review in those two uh, fields, we suggest you to use these current risk of bias tools and tweak them where possible to those other type of prognosis questions. And here are the papers that uh, refer to the two risk of bias tools. Six, there was a challenge, <clears throat> and it's still work in progress. And uh, recently, um, two, uh, the prognosis methods conveners have published two uh, large publications. One is a more technical one in SMMR, where actually the whole framework for doing a meta-analysis of prognostic model studies, actually prediction model studies, with both either a binary outcome, logistic regression, and a time to event outcome, survival models. And that framework also has been translated in a very, uh, actually it's the same paper as in the beginning, in a very more plain language written paper in the BMJ, and that's the top publication. And there all the guidance is given on how to do a meta-analysis on prognostic models. And the same is now ongoing for the same two type of papers for doing meta-analysis of prognostic factor studies, which will likely be out there also in the fall of this year. And finally, of course, we have the, uh, the step of the interpretation, drawing conclusions and uh, recommendations. And uh, there as well, that same paper it provides a clear guidance on how to interpret the results of a review and meta-analysis for in your final review report course and also how to interpret the results of the meta-analysis itself and secondly of course we know great very well as is being used for the um, certainty assessment of the results of meta-analysis of intervention reviews and also DDA reviews and the question is still arising and it's still work in progress to what extent great with the five domains, which is risk of bias, inconsistency, imprecision, indirectness and publications bias, whether the same elements likewise also apply and to the same amount of certainty or uncertainty for prognosis reviews. But the first two studies are already out there in the literature, as you can see also on this slide.